And I call on Emma Harker to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Thank you, President Officer. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to bring this important debate to the Chamber this evening to raise awareness of Marie Curie's great daffodil appeal. And I'm speaking on behalf of a motion brought to Parliament by my friend and colleague Gordon MacDonald, who is unfortunately unable to be here this evening. And I understand that more than 100 Marie Curie volunteers and staff from all across Scotland are here tonight, including the charity's chief uh, new Chief Executive Matthew Reid, and I'm sure colleagues across Chamber will join me in welcoming them here to their Parliament. <laughs> I'd like to start by paying tribute to yourself, presiding Officer, for the support you've given Marie Curie over the past few years, leading members' debates, raising awareness and hosting parliamentary events. And I will be doing this this evening also. And by the way, presiding officer told me that she was out on Saturday in her yellow top hat, collecting for the appeal also, and I wish I was there to witness her sonsy face. <laughs> presiding officer, the great daffodil appeal is one of the most iconic and recognised fundraising drives of the year. People all over the country will wear their yellow daffodil badges with a sense of pride that they will be donating money to support Marie Curie to deliver their world-class palliative care services in our communities, to support their research, to support their campaigning and to support the information services that they also provide. Last year, my colleague Joan McAlpine and I hosted a blooming great daffodil tea party in our regional office to raise funds and awareness. And earlier this year, I joined the palliative care cross-party group convened by my colleague Bob Doris, MSP, so that I could learn more about what could be done. Presiding officer. Of course, I will. Bob Doris. Uh, I thank Emma Harper for taking the intervention. Just a, a name checking just presides me the opportunity to to come to my feet to put on record the wonderful service that Marie Curie Hospice in Springburn and my constituency does for right across Glasgow. But Emma Harper uh, agree with me that it's also the, the, the Marie Curie community nurses who are invaluable in the city of Glasgow, including in the year 1718, where they supported 569 people at home, and that was 5,459 visits, that invaluable work and dedication that they provide to people who are in real difficult periods in their life. Emma Harper. I thank the member for, uh, for his intervention, and I think it's great that he is here in chamber supporting his Springburn constituents, who are the Marie Curie nurses, as well as the, the Springburn Marie Curie uh, um, Hospital, so thank you very much for being here. The services provided by Marie Curie are only possible through the dedication of the many thousands of volunteers donning top hats, bibs and collection buckets and braving the ever unpredictable good Scottish weather every March. And as always, the Scottish people are incredibly generous, donating thousands of pounds every year. And whether the daffodil is worn in solidarity or in memory of a loved one, each daffodil tells a story. My story is contained in my 30 years as a nurse. And last year, the Daffodil Appeal helped Marie Curie care for over 8,600 people living with a terminal illness, as well as their family members, friends and carers. They have a huge and irreplaceable impact on our communities at a time that can be incredibly difficult and challenging for families. Presiding officer, we can remind ourselves that the organisation takes the name from the twice Nobel Prize winning scientist Marie Curie for her research in radioactivity. And Marie agreed for her name to be used for a hospital staffed by women to care for and treat women with cancer. And the hospital was destroyed by a bomb in 1944, which led to the hospital being re-established as the Marie Curie charity. Marie Curie provides care for people with any terminal condition, whether that is terminal cancer, organ failure, heart disease or frailty. And increasingly, we see people presenting with many different and multiple conditions. They do, they do this across the whole of Scotland and the rest of the UK. Delivering frontline care services in 31 local authorities in Scotland through nursing and hospice services. Their volunteer befriending service helper is now reaching out to new areas and caring for more and more people with an information and support service which now supports over 10,000 people a year 
UK-wide. Marie Curie are also the biggest funder of palliative care research, and with two research leads in Scotland and over 16 active research projects, much of that expertise and knowledge is generated right here. Presiding officer, I'm proud that the Scottish Government has an ambitious vision that everyone who needs palliative care will have access to it by 2021. This is determination that I wholeheartedly share. The Scottish Government's strategic framework for this action on palliative and end-of-life care sets this out and it is outstanding to see that progress is already being made. And this progress is supported by Marie Curie and others in the sector. And I look forward to hearing from the Minister on the most recent up-to-date progress the Scottish Government and its partners are making. Presiding officer, it must also be acknowledged that sadly, despite progress, some people are still missing out. In Scotland, around 43,000 people who die each year need palliative care. Estimates suggest that a quarter of those people still miss out on some or all of the support they need. And we know that those dying with conditions other than terminal cancer, such as dementia, heart failure and frailty, are less likely to access palliative care. Older people, black, Asian and minority ethnic populations, as well as people who define as LGBTI and those who come from our poorest communities are far less likely to get the care they need when terminally ill and dying. I think that we can all agree that this is not acceptable and I'm pleased that this is being recognised and address, addressed by a Scottish Government working for the people of Scotland. We know that Scotland's ageing population is something to celebrate, but it does mean that in the years to come, more people will be living longer and there will be an increased need for palliative care. Marie Curie themselves, they estimate that at least another 7,000 people every year will die needing palliative care support by 2040. That's 50,000 people that we need to make sure receive the support they deserve. So it's clear that we're going to have to do more to ensure that people get the care they need now and in the years to come. Presiding officer, when preparing for this debate, I was pleased to see the wealth of support Marie Curie provides to my South Scotland constituents, and I think it is worth highlighting some of this important work. Across the NHS in Fries and Galloway, over 2017 and 18, there were 4,359 visits made to 542 people, and the patients by the regions, there, there are 31 dedicated Marie Curie nurses. The support from these nurses allowed 72.5% of palliative care patients to die in a place that they chose, which I welcome. Additionally, I'm pleased that across South Scotland, Marie Curie have seven shops raising funds for the charity, located in Ayr, Presswick, Troon, Lanark, Newton Stewart, Stranraer and Dumfries. And with over 896 dedicated volunteers, I thank each and every one of them for their efforts to make the lives of others more comfortable. In closing, presiding officer, I would like to wish Marie Curie every success for this year's Great Daffodil Appeal. And I would like to thank everyone at the charity for everything they do to support families across Scotland. I know the compassion, dignity, care, love and kindness they bring to everyone they look after and their families can never be covered in a simple thank you. But I want to be clear that gratitude of myself and of this parliament is here. Marie Curie provides support to her loved ones towards the end of their lives and it is our role as politicians to support them as best we can. Thank you.